If you want to get the proven way to run Facebook ads as a real estate agent so you can generate leads, appointments, and clients, you're in for a treat because here's what we're going to cover today. Exact ads our realtor clients have used to generate over 10x ROI, why advertise on Facebook specifically, how to avoid costly mistakes most real estate agents make when they run Facebook ads, how to create and launch your Facebook ads step by step by step, how to optimize your ads to get the best performance, and then also how to actually convert your leads into actual real estate clients. So let's go over first why advertise on Facebook specifically. Now at this point, I spent over a million dollars on Facebook ads and I spent last half a decade helping real estate agents build their personal brands online from tech savvy people to people that are super not tech savvy uh, to people that are a little bit tech savvy all the way back to some people that are very tech savvy. And I can tell you that Facebook is by far the easiest platform when it comes out to setting your ads up, getting them launched, getting them profitable, and then actually transforming your business and making a ton of money. And you'll see that it's relatively simple in practice when you go over when we go over this video together with you to actually build your campaign from scratch, start generating leads, and actually start doing actual listing appointments. It's the simplest thing, simplest pl platform to do this on. Now, the second reason why is the highest reach, meaning Facebook and Instagram, these meta platforms, they have the most active users out of any social media platform. And the demographic you're looking to reach, it has the highest reach of those people out of any of these platforms. So better than TikTok, better than any of platforms out there. Now, also with meta platforms, you will have access to predictable client acquisition. What that means is that your dollars, they turn into leads, appointments, and listings, closings consistently over time, but the entire process is dialed in. And this is something that is proven to work, and you can actually predict the results you get from these things. Next, let's cover some of the common mistakes I see real estate agents making all the time. This is something when I hop on a call with real estate agents personally, I ask them, okay, what have you tried? What are you doing? Uh, unfortunately, a lot of these things, they actually get trained in brokerage training. They actually get trained on YouTube or on, on some of the videos out there, on some of the trainings out there. So if you have done these things before, you may have wasted your money by doing these things. But I want to cover these mistakes in case, again, you're looking at running ads on Facebook, you're looking at doing these things. So don't do them again or don't even attempt to do these things again because these things are not going to produce your results and ultimately waste your ad spend, which is not something that we want for you. Now, let's go over the first mistake, and that is boosting posts. So this is the most common one. This is the easiest one to make because obviously the little button is over there to click for. So this is basically showing random ads to random people. And what is the outcome of that, right? The outcome of that is that it results into nothing. So this is thought very often, don't do that. Now, the second mistake real estate agents make is running one-off ads. So one-off ads is something that's kind of like a shiny object syndrome, but also a little bit different. So what I mean by this is that a lot of real estate agents, they treat Facebook ads example like as an example like a newspaper ad or as an example like a traditional marketing piece, right? Where ultimately, let's say they have $200 a month ad budget, right? They run that for two weeks on Facebook. Uh, they do it for one time and then they're like, oh, this didn't work. Okay, let's, let's try to run something else. Let's do something else, right? Um, and this is ultimately not something you want to do because paid advertising is a system. It's a process that you're going to be running through for years to come. And you can fine tune your process. You can scale your process. And because of that reason, right, we want to avoid this sort of like one off ad sort of mentality where, you know, we're just kind of running from one place to another, switching things over and over again from one platform strategy to another, because that's not going to allow you, again, to iterate, make it better, track it, right? Any of these things, scale it. It's not going to allow you to do so. So if before we have run a small ad, let's say $200, you try tested it out, uh, avoid doing that in the future. And we're going to cover in today's video exactly then how to go about actually systemizing it, processing it, and making it scalable uh, as far as running your ads. Now, third mistake is wrong expectations. So for a lot of real estate agents, they lack awareness as far as how the process actually should work, like what it actually looks like when it works. And without this, it's impossible to run profitable campaigns. Now, we'll go over this in the next step, so you'll see exactly what I mean by this. Now, the fourth mistake is not optimizing for quality leads with Meta AI. And what I mean by this is that most agents and most lead, lead, lead platforms that actually sell you these leads, they run ads in a way that optimizes for lowest cost per lead 
at the expense of the quality of the leads. So a lot of videos that you actually see out there that tell you, okay, $1 Facebook leads or buy these cheap leads, right? Essentially from these lead platforms, uh, but it's gonna result into large problems when you actually call these leads. So we can cover that definitely later on as well in more depth as far as how to avoid that. Uh, and then also why that is actually a problem to run your ads in that particular way. Okay, so the next step is gonna be creating and launching your ads. Okay, so the first step you, you want to be doing when creating and launching your ads is that you want to be running your ads through your ads manager. So if before you have run your ads by boosting or something like that, like we discussed before, that's not something you wanna be doing. You wanna do it professionally, you wanna be doing it properly through your ads manager. Now, the way to get to Ad Manager is that all you have to do is just go to facebook.com and then here on the first page, you just see here on the left corner, you will be able to see Ad Manager. Now, in some cases, you may not see it right here. Then all you have to do is just press see more right here and it's gonna show up around here. So it's gonna look something like this. You'll see here Ad Manager. So once you click on the Ads Manager, it's gonna take you to this page right here. There's gonna be the account overview page. And to get to the level where we wanna to get to, all you have to do is just go here from the left corner and press on campaign. So you're gonna see a view like this. Now, next step is we're gonna build actual demo campaigns. So this video is here, an actual live demonstration of building an actual real estate campaign. And you see exactly how it works step by step by step, like promised at the start of the video. Okay, now that I'm switched over to the new ad account, we're gonna walk through the whole process step by step by step and create an actual live campaign on this video. Now, before we do that, let's go over how the actual campaign structure and how the actual Facebook kind of campaign works because you might not have heard about this information before, maybe your first time actually seeing this. So the very first thing at the top when you're creating a Facebook campaign is your actual campaign. And your campaign determines the objective you have with your marketing spend. So ultimately, do you want to generate traffic? Do you want to generate reach? Do you want to generate leads? Whatever the case may be, right? The campaign determines your goal of the campaign, right? So that is the first thing we wanna be setting as we're gonna be starting off this process and you're gonna see exactly how that gets created. Now, the second stage of this, and as you can see under this, is that under your campaign, you will have your ad sets. And your ad sets are sort of like targeting and the budget that you're doing per targeting. So imagine like a pool of people and then you're selecting, okay, I wanna have these people that actually see my ads, right? That's what the ad sets are doing. You're able to target the exact audience you're looking to get, uh, and then also determine, okay, how much money I'm gonna spend on these people, how much money I'm gonna spend on these people, et cetera. That's what the ad, set are, uh, when, ad sets are when we create these campaigns. Now, under your ad sets are gonna be your actual ads. So these are gonna be the pictures, these are gonna be the videos, these are gonna be the texts. All these things, or all the actual ads, they're in this category. So these are the ads as well. Now, having said that, let's go to the next stage. So now we're gonna create an actual campaign. So the top, we're gonna to create the objective of that. So let's go here over to the Facebook ad manager and over here to create a campaign, we're gonna go over to this green button right here and we're gonna click create. Now, when we create the campaign, you'll see that we have different options. And again, if you don't know what all of these buttons mean, it can seem extremely, extremely confusing because there's all these different goals you could go for, right? And if you're first time here on Facebook, it's, it, it's uh, very difficult to do. So for our purposes, we wanna press here on leads and generate leads for your business. So we're gonna press here on leads. This is the one you wanna select. Most of them are not gonna serve your purposes when it comes down to this particular Goal. Now that we have created the actual campaign, let's go over the viable campaign types you can actually run. So we're gonna have leads with instant forms. These are running ads to strangers in your market where upon clicking the ad, people are asked to fill out a short form inside of the platform. So we're not taking them to like a landing page or a funnel or anything like that. We're getting them to fill out a form inside of the actual Facebook platform. We're gonna cover this A to Z here in today's video. Now, we also have leads with landing pages. So this is where we run ads to strangers in your market, where upon clicking the ad, we actually take them to a landing page of yours where they actually opt in through that landing page. So we're basically driving traffic from Facebook to your landing page. Now, the third one is gonna be messenger ads. So this is running ads to strangers in your market where upon clicking on the ad, people are prompted to send you a message on Messenger on this Facebook platform. 
Now, the fourth one is going to be awareness and engagement retargeting ads. This is going to be running ads to leads where you've already generated the lead. And now our goal is to nurture those leads. So this is going to be your database, your sphere of influence, obviously your social media audiences, whatever the case may be, you can actually plug them into Facebook and show them posts. You can nurture them via this campaign and get them to reach out to you. Now, like we just saw in the Facebook, right? There's all these options, all these things to do. These four are the only four viable campaign types for your real estate business specifically. Meaning all the others are just waste of time, waste of money, and you don't want to be doing it. Essentially, these four are going to be the ones you want to be running when you try to grow your real estate business. Now that we're here back in the ads manager, let's cover how this looks like. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is you want to be setting up your category. Now for our lead generation campaign, we need to select this housing category. Uh, here are countries, obviously United States, where you're from. Buying type, auction, campaign objective, leads, A-B test, make sure this is off. Uh, advantage campaign budget, make sure that's off. That's all you need to do over here. Then we just press next. So let's go over now the ad set level. At this stage, we're gonna set both the targeting and then also the budget for your ad set. So let's go over these settings right here. For conversion level, you wanna set it to instant forms. Then for Facebook page, obviously select your Facebook page. And then at this stage, you'll see the performance goals. So there's two options, maximize number of leads and then maximize number of conversion leads. Make sure you, that you select and maximize number of conversion leads. The reason why is because most of the coaches, most of the videos out there, they will recommend you to select maximize number of leads, right? But actually based on our research, uh, based on Facebook's own research, maximizing number of conversion leads leads to both higher quality of leads, but then also smaller price per lead. So get the actually best of those both benefits by selecting maximize number of conversion leads. Now, the reason why is because maximizing number of leads is going to show your ads to people that tend to just click on different things and opt into a lot of different things, right? So that leads into low quality of leads because you just get people that are just kind of scrolling around, clicking around, not really serious about the intent that they have. So again, make sure that you select maximize number of conversion leads at this stage, extremely important. Uh, then over here, you'll see CRM integration, leave this as is, and then cost per result, leave this as is, dynamic creative, leave this off. Uh, and then for daily budget, select $10 per ad set. So $10 for daily budget. We're going to go over why and how this works next. So how much money should you actually spend on your ads? And when I first started out in online marketing, I sought out and mentored under people that have spent over 500 million on running these social media ads. Um, and the first thing I learned is the importance of understanding these metrics, importance of understanding these finances behind the actual campaign. Okay, so when you start out with Facebook, and this is what I thought as well before, is that, okay, well, I spend this amount of money on Facebook ads, right? And then I'll just magically get clients. And what I learned when I saw a mentor on all these people is that they actually knew to the T, to the set, how much it costs to get that client that they're looking for and how all the steps before that actually work. They knew that to the cent, how that actually works. And then I got it. So before I thought like, okay, I would spend money on Facebook ads. And you know, that's, I would be like thinking, okay, well, I could spend $500 or I could spend a thousand dollars. Right. And that was my mentality around Facebook ads. It's like, okay, I'll spend money and then something comes or something doesn't come. But then when I mentored under these people, I realized that, okay, well, when they actually run ads, they know these metrics to the cent, right? And so these are the standard metrics a campaign like this will typically look like, okay? So you spend money on your Facebook ads, and then from there, you will generate these leads. Now, these leads will cost you, let's say, anywhere from $15 to $30 per lead. Now, you generate these leads, and this, from then from these leads, you will be generating conversation. You guys will hop on a phone call, and then from there, you're going to try to convert them into an appointment. Now, for as far as like you get these leads, right, you're not going to have a conversation with every single lead, no matter what campaign you run or how great of a realtor you are, right? So the standard metric for live calls is going to be around 40 to 50% live call rate. So if you generate about two leads, you can generate about one conversation from those two leads. Now, when you get these conversations, again, not every conversation will also turn into an actual appointment where you guys actually have a chance to close them into a buyer agreement or a seller agreement. So I would expect a standard metric around 10 to 20% conversion to an appointment from your live call conversations. And when you have that appointment, obviously, again, not every buyer or listing appointment will actually convert into an actual agreement. Let's suppose, again, around a standard metric would be around 
40 to 60% appointment to conversion rate. Now, these are general campaign KPIs co covered for this exact campaign we covered here today. So exact metrics are going to vary based on your location, based on the market cycles, based on the ad type, the sales process, the way you talk to people, how good of a salesperson you are, right? Remarketing quality. So how good is your actual content that you have in your retargeting ads, your emails, your brand experience, like all these things, they're vary based on a person. So these are standard KPIs for typical metrics we typically see when we run these ad types as example with our clients or that we have seen working with different real estate agents. Now, having said this, when we look at these metrics, you must know what these metrics are. So if right now you're running ads or you have before run ads and you're completely blind to these metrics, you don't have a tracking system, you don't know how much your cost per lead is, you don't know how much your life call rate is, you don't know how much your appointment rate is, you don't know how much your listing appointment conversion rate is, you don't know how much it costs you to generate a listing. So if you don't know these numbers, it's going to be impossible or extremely difficult to create a profitable campaign. And the reason why is because what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a consistently predictable client acquisition system and form for your real estate business. And so meaning you want to put in, let's say, $1,000 into your ad spend here over on Facebook ads. And on the other end, you want to generate yourself a client. Let's say that be a buyer client or a listing client. Now, when you get that client, obviously you get the commission, right? So let's say it's $9,000 net that you generate after actually selling or buying a house with that person. Well, now we can put in $1,000 and get $9,000 out. We kind of have like a client printing machine built into your business. But if you don't have these numbers, you just have no idea what is what are these numbers at all, right? You don't have a way to track these numbers. What's going to happen is that, you know, you're not going to even know where it makes sense to run these ads in the first place or even worse. Let's say these ads work for you. They work for you. You generate a client, but because you're not aware of these metrics, right? You're not aware. It's actually, it's working. It's very profitable, right? You may turn off these ads off. Let's say you have a bad streak of leads or just feel emotionally kind of compelled to do so. So having said this, you got to know these numbers. And it is a little bit like Tillman Fertitta said, restaurant billionaire. He said that you got to know your numbers when you're running your business. And in business like restaurant business, if you don't know your numbers, you're done because, you know, you're going to order some meat, you're going to order some vegetables. And if you don't know those numbers, you're going to have a full fridge of spoiled food. So it's the same exact thing when you're running your ads as a real estate agent. We got to take these things as seriously as you would take as a restaurant business owner or any other business owner out there. We got to take these things seriously and put attention to it. It's as important or even more important than in any other business you could run. So having said this, let's get back to this ad set level and cover exactly how to set this campaign up. Okay, so let's continue from the ad set setup. So over here, we're going to first dive right into the location. So we got to select your audience and obviously select your exact location or where you want to get the leads from. So we're going to deselect this default location over here and then we're going to move on over here and select your exact area. So let's say as an example, we are from Austin, Texas. So we're going to type it right here, Austin, Texas. And then we're going to get a view like this. Now over here, you'll see that by default, it goes to this area right here. So what you want to do is you want to select the exact area to be as close as possible as to where you want to generate clients from. And the way you can do this is by selecting this drop pin right here. And then let's say as an example, we want to get clients more around this area right here. We would drop it right there. And then over here, we'd be able to click on the previous circle that we had. And now our targeting is going to be more based around here. Okay, now that we selected the location itself, we want where we want to get customers from or leads from. So over here, we're going to dive right into the age. This section, you don't need to touch at all. The reason why is because we're running the ads from the housing category. So it's going to mess up with your ad set. It's probably not going to get approved if you touch this at all. So leave this on as is it is right now. Uh, genders, don't mess with this either. So make sure it's all. And then from here, we're going to go into detailed targeting. So for detailed targeting, we're going to go to these Facebook ad angles. And then for each ad set, we're going to have a different targeting for our uh, interests. So first things first, we're going to go to ad set number one. This is the one that we're creating right now. And we have three different interests that we're targeting in that exact area. So first one is going to be real estate. And as you can see here, we have this uh, kind of closed off. So industry. So make sure that you don't post this only the interest itself. So we're going to copy this interest and then we're going to plug right into that detailed targeting. 
like this. And then over here, you'll see the exact uh, area we want to target. So the industry. So you're going to plug that in. Next step, we're going to go to the home equity. And again, credit and lending. We're not going to post this. Only the home equity. We just select that part. So we're going to add that right here. And then we're going to move on to that next one. So mortgage calculator. And we'll add that in here as well. There we go. Uh, now that we have selected the detail targeting for the first ad set that we're going to use. Uh, next, we're going to have languages. So make sure it's just all languages. And then for placements, advantage plus pay placements. So make sure this is on as is. Now, from here, once we have this first initial ad set done, we can move on to naming the actual ad set. So we're going to go right here. And then we just, for now, we'll just select angle one, angle one, and then we're going to type right, right in our targeting. So for this ad set, we're going to have the real estate home equity mortgage calculator. So for your own purposes, again, we can just have like a quick version of this mortgage calculator and then home equity. Next, we're going to go into and set up the actual ad. By the way, if you want to have that document itself where you'll see all the ad angles and then all the instructions for setting these ads up, just comment Facebook down below. Now, having said that, let's move on to setting up the actual ad. So to do this, all we have to do is to go to ads right here. And then over here, we'll see our ad that we're setting up. So we're going to press edit. So before we go into the final stage of building the actual ad, let's cover the campaign launch setup. So a very common mistake I see people here do is that they launch just one ad with one ad set of targeting and expect their ads to work. So you don't want to be doing that, but rather we want to add variety and let AI define those winning combinations for us. So you want to be launching multiple combinations and multiple interests, multiple ad angles and multiple ad images. And during the first three to four days of running your campaign, your daily ad spend is going to be going higher than usual. So at the beginning stages, you're going to be spending a little bit more than usual because you're testing out different combinations of audiences, different combinations of ads, different combinations of ad images in order for you to be able, able to find the best, most optimal ads at ad sets to run in your exact market and also interest as well and also the audiences as well. So AI is incredibly powerful when you're running these ads and it's going to find these things for you. You don't have to figure out them yourself. Now, from here, we're going to go to the next stage. So we're going to have the actual ad images. So we're going to have around three to five ad images that we need per ad angle. And in each ad set, we'll add three to five images per ad set to ultimately increase our probability of finding an image that's going to work really, really well to capture people's attention, get them engaged with the ad, and ultimately follow through when it comes down to filling out the actual form. So ultimately, ad optimization with AI is going to be looking something like this. You will be adding yourself different ad images for variations. We're going to have different ad text variations. And we're also going to have audience interest variations. And based on this, we're going to have all these ads running. And we're going to be, our goal is to find these winning ads. So by winning ads, there can be even up to three to five times difference compared to these other ads. So if you spend on one ad, you're going to get leads for $10. But on some of these losing ads, that could cost you even up to $50, up to $100. So here the goal is ultimately to test these out, remove the losing ones, and then only keep the winning ads and then run those ads exclusively. And with this process, we can avoid the mistake most real estate agents do, which is what, just what we covered. They just want one ad set with one ad image. And ultimately, even if it works, right, even if it works, you get the leads. You only have one ad, one ad image and one audience interest. So it's going to work for a very, very short period of time. And then ultimately, at some point, you'd have to turn off your ads. But with this strategy, we're going to be able to run your ads for longer periods of time. And they're going to stay fresh. They're going to stay new. And you'll be able to run them for a long, long period of time without even touching them for even up to months. So having said this, let's go into ad creative tips. Ultimately, the very first thing you want to be doing is to use scroll stopping images. Nowadays, people are looking at their phones or looking at the computer. There's all this stimulus going on. And unless you're able to capture people's attention right from the get go, you won't have a chance to get them to actually read your ad, consume the ad and ultimately follow through to become your lead. So the main function of your ad images is to stop the scroll. It needs to trigger a reaction from the user in the moment immediately they see the ad. And image is one of the most important, if not the most important part about that. Now, you also want to be using hooks and compel people to click on the ad. So the first sentence of your ad needs to speak specifically to the people you're looking to attract and create curiosity in them to read further. 
The rest of the ad should create intrigue to get people to take action you want them to take. So nothing else, get them to take the action you want those people to take, which is ultimately clicking the link and then filling out that form in this instance. So the third step is to make your ads look like native posts they would see on this platform. So very often I see people that they run ads, for example, through some platform or to some format that they got online or from their brokerage. And these days people have incredibly sensitive detected mechanisms for ads and or also for spam. And so they kind of do right what they shouldn't do, which is to play right into that. And your ads should not look like a giant billboard ad or a giant advertisement. It should look like a native post, just a regular post they would see from a friend on their user feed. So make sure your ads are native to the platform itself when you create them. We're going to move on to setting up the actual ad. Now here we're going to set up the ad name. So it's going to be the angle one. Once you have named your ad name, from here we move on to selecting your identity. So obviously make sure you have your Facebook page and Instagram page selected. Uh, and then over here you have the ad setup. So make sure you have here create ad. And then over here you have formatting. So make sure you have single image or video. So you have carousel on by default, select single image or video. And then multi-advertiser ads have these turned off. Now, once you have done that, we'll move on to your ad creative. So from here we can obviously remove all it, button right here and then add in the images we want to add. So the fir first one, we're going to add only one image. Now for every person, you're going to have your own ad images. You want to use usually pictures of local houses as a default image. And then from here, you can press upload to upload the images you want to use for these ads to make sure you're using local images that are high definition, high quality, and you can upload them right to your Facebook ads manager. Now I have already done this. So I'm going to select my first image right here and we're going to move on to adding these in directly. Now over here next, you'll see select media crop for placements. So make sure these are all at original. So none of, none of these other settings, all, all at original. And then from here, we'll move on to the optimizing settings. So once you get to the optimize stage over here, we want to deselect all of these standard enhancements and all the other options Facebook will give us. So here for standard enhancements, go right here on the on section, press on this little arrow right here, and then go here and press edit. Once you press edit, you'll be able to now turn off these standard enhancements or every single option that Facebook will offer you. So we'll do that right over here. And then from here, we can move on to the next one. We can see everything is good to go. Now, next we'll go back. And then over here, we wanna turn off also music. So go to on and then turn off this music right here. So just make sure all of these are turned off. And then from here, you can move on to pressing done. No. So once that's done, now from here, we just need to add our primary text. So what the ad is about and the text that people will be seeing. So as this is angle ad angle number one, a why now and a custom list run that we're going to be running. All we need to do for this is just to copy our ad text that we see right here. And then once you have copied it, we can plug that right into that primary text. Now, as you can see, this is ad is specifically customized to each area, right? So obviously you want to add in your own exact area. So here we're going to add in as an example, we're going to add in Austin because that's kind of like the market that we're targeting in this demo ad setup. Now from here, once this is done, we're going to add in our headline for the ad, which again is something that we can find right over here uh, that we can just plug and play, pl that we just plug and play to this ad. Now, and again, here we just add in our exact local area. Now, once that is done, we're going to move down and then over here, we'll see description. You can leave this on as is, so no need to add anything here. And then for call to action over here, you'll see it's by default, it's going to say sign up. So make sure that you select here, learn more. So we found better results with learn more than the, the sign up feature. So once we have selected your call to action to learn more from here, we move on to the destination. So making your form where your leads will go. So over here, you go to instant form and then here, press create form. So here you want to press continue and then now you want to name your form name. So just a quick note about making your form and then about setting that up. Make sure that your form headline and description and thank you page is aligned with the ad angle messaging that you're doing. So as an example, if your ad message is sending them a list of free homes, you want to use uh, ad messaging then also in the form that's in line with that. Now, if you're doing something like, let's say a new construction ad that we're going to cover here later on, again, make sure that your form is also aligned with that. So over here, what we want to do now is we want to name this form. So according to the ad angle that we're running, 
so that this way we'll know, okay, this ad set, now that we start running it, it's also gonna be in alignment with the actual form. So we can use this exact form and then later just change it a little bit where we're gonna be running the other ad sets as well, according to that exact ad angle. Now, having said that, over here, you'll for select your form type. Now, over here, you'll see by default, it's gonna say add more volume. And then also here, you'll see here higher intent. And then also you'll see here rich creative. Now, make sure you, that you don't select higher intent here because we're optimizing for that intent in other ways. So over here, make sure that you select more volume. This way you're gonna get uh, the best results. Now, from here, we move on to the intro section. So over here in the intro section, you have the background image. You can just have this as is. So just use your image from your ad. And then over here, you'll see greeting, etc. So for this, all we need to do now is just to go to this instant form example and just plug and play again all these options that we have right over here. So first things first, we're gonna add in our headline. So for headline, we have area homes. So we're gonna add that right here. So again, Austin homes. And then for description, we can have just a paragraph and then again, plug and play this description right here. So we're gonna copy this and then we're gonna plug that in right here. So having said that, next step from here is we'll just need to add in our questions and that conditional logic. So first things first, when we add in the questions, we first I wanna obviously just add the questions themselves. And then after that, we'll add in the other sections for conditional logic. So over here, when you go to the questions, you can press conditional logic, turn this on. And then from here, just press add a question to add multiple choice question, and then select these questions. But again, you can just plug and play directly from this document. And again, if you want to get this document, just comment Facebook down below and we'll send that over to you. So again, let's plug and play this question right here. And then we'll just need to add in the answers themselves really quick. Once you have added any of these questions, next step from here is make sure that you select conditional logic. Now for this next step, the reason why we do this is because a lot of times if you have run ads before, let's say on Facebook or any kind of online ads, you'll probably experience that, okay, you have run the ads, you have gotten leads, but then, okay, you call the leads and maybe they're not the right people or maybe they're not having that high intent or whatever the case, right, they're just not converting into actual leads. So what we want to do here with conditional logic is to train the Facebook AI to give us the right type of people, the people that are really looking for. By using this conditional logic, as you start to get these forms, Facebook will be able to see, okay, well, these types of people I'm looking to have. These types of people we're looking to get as a lead. And then these types of people we don't want as a lead. And then over time, Facebook will be able to just to give you those right types of people over and over and over again, and then ignore those wrong types of people. So having said that, let's dive right in. Now, of course, like with any type of online ad, you're not gonna have like 100% conversion rate, but this can be a difference of let's say 30, 40% in your lead quality. So extremely important step. So to do this, all you have to do is just select the conditional logic here on. And then now we're gonna go over the conditional logic we're gonna select for each of these questions. So now that we're gonna be setting up the conditional logic, all you need to do now is just to follow this document to the T. So let's say we go over this first question right here. Uh, over here, we're going to go to the first question. And for the logic, we have this first question. Select over here, go to question. And we go to question number two. If the answer, I'm thinking about buying a home. Now, if you go to the second question, I'm actively shopping for a home. Same exact thing. So let's select go to question and select go to question number two. Now, if somebody responds by saying just browsing over here, you want to select here, as you can see in the document, please qualify as a lead. So to disqualify them as a lead, you want to select close form right here. And just for some context, when you are running your ads over on the meta platform, this is the most powerful marketing AI right now in the world. So there's no Twitter or so TikTok, there's no other platform that's better than Facebook meta AI to actually run ads on. This is extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, probably one of the world's most advanced AIs as far as marketing goes. So this is really, really powerful things that you're doing right here. Even though they look simple on the screen, there's a very advanced algorithm here on the back end that's gonna be, again, running these ads and learning from running these ads. So let's go to the question number two. And over here again, we can select that conditional logic. And again, all we need to do is just to follow this document right here. So it says, okay, so how soon do you want to buy a home? And over here, we don't need to have any disqualifiers. So we're just gonna select 
the next step, next question from here. So you, all you have to do is just go to a question and then go to question number three and then select apply the, this logic to all the answers below. It's going to set that up automatically like that. Now, next step from here is the question number three. So for question number three, we're going to have right here. So we're going to have yes, no, and I'm looking to buy my first home or do you need to sell your existing home before you buy? Now over here for the first question, we can leave that on as is. So we're going to go to logic and then over here, we're going to press submit form. And then here we have the ending page. So we're going to select end page for leads. Now over here we have the no. So for the no, as we can see, we have this qualify as a lead if you're optimizing for sellers only. So if you're trying to have double ended deals, you want to have both. Okay. Let's say somebody is buying and selling and you're okay. Also with working just buyers, right? Then you want to select just this as is, so end page for leads. But if you're only optimizing for the sellers, then in that case, you want to disqualify them as a lead if you're optimizing for sellers only. Okay, so for this next answer, we're going to have no. And okay, somebody does not need to sell their house before they buy. That means they are going to be only a buyer. So if you want to have sellers only, you want to disqualify them as a lead if they answer no. Now, if you want to have both, so then in that case, you can leave this on as it. So go to submit form. So if you only want to have sellers, make sure that you can disqualify them as a lead for this exact section. So let's say for our example, we're going to say we want to have specifically, specifically sellers. So from here, we're going to select just disqualify as lead. So press close form. So for this next question, I'm looking to buy my first home. And then again, here we want to disqualify them as a lead if we're optimizing for sellers only. So again, here we want to select in page, close form and in page for not leads for this section. So for this section right here, it depends a little bit on as far as, okay, are you open to working with buyers or do you only want to work with sellers? And what I mean by this is like, okay, if the answer, do you need to sell your existing home before you buy? If the answer yes, right? That's going to be in that, okay, they are sellers. But if they say no, they don't need to sell their existing home before they buy it. Then from that point, we know that, okay, they're buyers. So if you want to only have sellers, you want to disqualify them as a lead over here. If you're optimizing for sellers only, because that's going to train Facebook AI. Okay. We only want to have these types of people, right? So if it says I'm looking to buy my first home again, if you don't want to work with first time home buyers, again, you need to disqualify them as a lead over here. Again, if you're optimizing for sellers only. So what you need to do over here is to decide, okay, which way you want to go for, okay. Do you only want to have sellers or do you also want to have buyers are open to working with both? Just be aware that okay, if you only want to have sellers, it is going to drive up your cost per lead a little bit, but don't worry about that. Again, it's still going to be profitable, but make sure that you select according options, depending on your preferences, as far as which type of clients you want to work with. So if you want to have these again, for only the sellers, make sure that over here for these answers, you select uh, over here and then select close form. So it goes to end page for non leads and then same thing over here. So end page for non leads. And then that's going to tell Facebook AI, okay, when these types of people come in, they're not qualified as a lead. And again, if you want to have both buyers and sellers, all you need to do here is just to press submit form and then end page for leads. For our purposes, we're going to leave this on. So we're going to have both buyers and sellers for our purposes for this exact example. Okay. Now that we have completed the conditional logic and then we all also complete the questions. Last step over here is to add in the pre-fill questions. For this, all we need to do is to go to pre-fill questions description. And then over here, we need to add in obviously our description for the form pre-fill section. So we just add this in right over here. And then next step here is to add in the email, phone name. This is going to be at, by default, but you just need to add in their phone number. So press add a category, contact fields, and then over here, select phone number. Now in the phone number section, they'll be able to add in their phone number. And obviously from there, you'll be able to call them as a comment as a lead. Now, right here, we're going to go to the privacy policy. So for privacy policy, we'll just want to add in the privacy policy that you have on your website. So for us, we'll just add in nosu.io slash privacy policy. So usually just add in your website, essentially go to your website and select your privacy policy. That's going to be on most of the websites. And then here, leak text, just privacy policy. So now that we have added in our privacy policy, all we need to do now is to add in our thank you page. Now, custom disclaimer, this section, you can leave this on as is. You'll go to end page and then end page for leads, click on this. And then over here, we select our headline and then the description. 
So to add in the headline, we can just add in headline right from the document. So I just press copy here and then headline success and description. We'll add in the description again from the document. That's all we need to do. And then over here, we'll have our call to action button and the link and then call to action text. So for button, we'll add in view list of homes. And then for link, we obviously want to add in the PDF of a custom list you've created with Canva, that's preferred. Or you can also add in a custom home search link to your IDX website, whichever one is easier for you. We do recommend curating your own custom list. It's usually a lot better than just a link to your home search through an IDX. So definitely recommend it to, again, create your own list, make it really, really good. And then when your lead magnet is really, really good, you'll be able to have, again, better quality as far as your leads. Now, same thing goes for end page for non-leads. All we need to do for this one is just to change the text a little bit, just so that we're not saying that we will be calling you like we do for the leads. We'll just say that click below to access your lists or otherwise does exactly the same uh, thank you page as the other one. So for headline, we're going to select your success or description. We're going to select click below to access your list. So you can plug and play these things right here. For call to action text, same exact thing. We're going to select view the list of homes. And then for the link, we want to add in again that link of either one of those resources we just covered earlier. And then over here, we just press create form. Now that we have created our form, we just press publish and our form and add angle number one will be live to go. Now that this is ready, we're going to go over here and for the add section, we're going to duplicate. And then in the duplicate section, select existing campaign. And for existing campaign, we have obviously the same exact campaign we have just done so that whatever you named your campaign as and then here you want to select an ad set for your ad select existing ad set so the one ad set that we're doing right now and then what we're going to do over here is for number of copies select three so the, what we're doing right now is we're just creating the same ad but we're just again changing the images we're going to be running in those ad sets so this way facebook will be able to test that out as far as different uh, images go for that particular text when you're running that ad so for this, we'll have the same exact options. And then now we want to add in those images one by one of to these each ad sets. So here we have, as you can see, it's the same image. So if we go to the second image and then over here, we'll change the image. We'll just go to the image and then here, press media, remove all, and then add media, add image and select the second image we have over here and press next. Same exact thing for these settings. So have all of these on original, press next. And then over here for standard enhancements, just have all of these off. So for music, we want to have that off as well. And now we are good to go. Now we press done. Now, once we have done that, we'll go to the third one. So we go to edit. And again, same exact thing. We'll just change the image. So go to media, remove all, add media, add image. And then we'll select the third image right over there. Same exact thing over here. We're going to have all of these at original. And then for next section, we're going to have all of these turned off, simple as this. And then now we just need to add in our final and fourth image. So we go to the fourth, add, and then over here, select add creative, remove all, add media, add image, and select the fourth image right over here. And same exact thing over here, just have all of these at original. And then for enhancements, have all of these turned off as usual and press done. Now that we're done with this, we'll press publish for all of these ads right, by selecting them right here and then pressing publish. All right, now that we're finished with our ads, now we need to add in the targeting options for testing. So we have this ad angle number one. All we need to do now is to add in these two other interest-based targetings. So we'll do this by going to duplicate and then over here, pressing existing campaign, same campaign we're running is on. And then for number of copies, we'll press two. So two more. And then here, show existing reactions. This can be turned on. Now, once you do this, press duplicate. And then over here, all we need to do is just to change around the targeting itself. So we go to this first ad set right here, press edit. And then over here, once we do this, we want to scroll down to this detailed targeting section. 
And then you can have this turn on as is. So location is same exact, but over here for detail targeting, you wanna turn off the previous settings for that asset that we already have. And then we want to select these other interests. So now we're gonna go to Zillow. Then we're going to go to Trulium. And then we'll add in realtor.com. So once this is added, we can press publish. One more thing to do is you want to select the name of the ad angle. And again, same exact thing as we covered before, just name it as the targeting option. So Zillow, we have Trulium, and then Realtor.com. So like this. And then again, we're good to go on this. Now that we have finished with that, we'll go again to our campaign and we'll have one more, we got a change for the targeting. So we'll go again to the ad set. And then over here, we're gonna scroll down and then deselect the previous targeting options. And then now we wanna add in detail targeting for the other sections. So house, apartment, residential area, and single family detached homes. And then we'll change the name of the ad set. So we have house, apartment, residential area. And we are good to go. So press publish. Okay, now that we're done with this, we have our first ad set uh, live. We'll go back to our campaign. Now we have these ad sets running over here. Okay, now that we have completed our first angle, all we need to do now is to add in the two other angles. So to do this, all we need to do now is just select all of these, press duplicate, and then here select existing campaign, and then number of copies have this as one, and then show existing reactions, comment shares, and you ask can have this as on. So press duplicate. And then once you press duplicate, just change around the name to angle two. So for all of these ad sets that we're doing right here. So we'll just go here, angle two, angle two, and same thing here, angle two. Then once you have renamed the ad sets, now we gotta go here and then select all of these ad angles. And then you wanna go to ads for three ad sets. Now here, select all of the ads and then go to edit. And then in the edit section, you wanna go to primary text. So all we do now is just that we change the text that we're using in these ads. So to do this, we're gonna go to add angle number two. And then over here, we have the text itself. So we just copy the text. And then we remove the previous text that we had with this. And now we have the new one. Now, all we're gonna do now is just obviously add in the area. And then next thing here, you'll see headline. So for headline, we're gonna have a different headline. So most anticipated homes in area. And then once we do that, we're gonna to go to call to action button, select that as learn more. That's already by default in there. Now that we have added in primary text and we have added in the headline, all we need to do now is when you run this ad, as we covered before, you wanna adjust the form a little bit to your ad itself. So if you're again running a new construction ad, it's gonna be different messaging, let's say if you're running some other type of ad. So to do this, all you need to do here is just to press duplicate. And then when you press duplicate over here, you can rename the form as angle number two. And then over here, you'll see all the messaging. So you can kind of change this around to be more aligned with that. Otherwise it's gonna be the same exact process. You'll press create form. And now you're good to go you have the ad angle or angle number two here for the form. So once this is completed, you'll just press publish. It's gonna go automatically to all of those ads and 
the ad set that I just covered, it's going to go automatically as far as the ad text goes. So it's as simple as that to get that up and running. Now that we have completed that, all we need to do here is then to do that one more time for our ad angle number three. So to do this, we'll again just select all of these ad angle number twos. We'll go to duplicate, and then here we'll go to existing campaign, select the campaign that we're running. Number of copies is going to be at one, and then this can be turned on as usual for this one as well. So we'll press duplicate. Now we have again these three new ad sets. So we're going to change the ad angle name to ad angle number three. And then now that we have done this, we'll do the same exact process for these ad sets as well. So we select all the ad sets, go back to ads for three ad sets. We we'll select all of these ads. We we'll go to edit, and then when we go to edit, we want to scroll down and find our primary text. And for the primary text, we'll go to add angles, a document, and then select this text right here. And then we'll just replace this primary text with our new text. Same thing for our headline. So we'll change the headline here as well. And again, it's going to automatically go to all of those ads that we just covered. So again, we're adding multiple variations of different types of ad angles, different approaches to the marketplace. So this way, the AI, you will also know what works best right now in your market. And then these ad angles that we're running are already going to be proven winners, you know, based on hundreds of thousands of thousands of dollars of ad budget already spent, already spent out there in the marketplace. So we know the ad angles themselves are proven to work, but we need to find, okay, what's going to be the perfect ad angle for your market? Because for every market, for every realtor, there's different se seasons. There's also different situations where one ad ang angle works really well in one market. The other angle does not work in one market, right? So what works for one person doesn't work for the other person. It works at one time, doesn't work in one time, right? So that's why we got to run this test. And then this way you'll know, okay, this ad set is the best one to run right now. But if that changes, we can always go back to the testing. So the difference can be between, okay, you're paying, let's say, $10 for a really qualified lead versus you're paying like $70 for not that good of a lead in terms of having the right angle, right messaging, right picture. And that's why I want to highlight is that if you have run ads before and you have not run it through this testing process, or maybe you have not had the right angles, that could be the reason why you have not been able to be successful. If you have able to, if you have tried to run ads before, kind of like quickly set it up or run it through like a software or a tool, that's one of the biggest reasons why is why it is because it's really the content, the messaging, the things that you're running as or the way the ads are being managed are not being properly set in place. But when you follow this video's instructions, you will be able to run your ads like a person that would spend millions and millions of dollars on advertising every year. This is how the professionals do it. You're going to be the, one of the most advanced real estate agents as far as your Facebook marketing and the way you're running your ads go. Now, having said that, let's go through the rest of the ad. So now we have the primary text. Um, also here we have the headline. This is also set up as well. We want to do the same exact thing for the form. So you go here, duplicate, and then adjust the messaging just a little bit for your particular ad set. So if there's differences in that. So you go here, duplicate, and run through that same exact process. Now, having said that, all these can be left on. And now all we need to do at this point is just to press publish. And again, all these ad sets, all these messagings will be automatically duplicated and created with the right exact messaging we want to have for this angle. Okay, so now your ads are live and underway to start generating you leads. Now, the problem will be that you have no way of knowing when these leads are starting to come in or what these leads are, except for you to actually go to Facebook and then look at these leads yourself. So obviously as a real estate agent, that's not optimal. We don't want to be like looking around at Facebook all the time. So you do want to connect your CRM and also your email notifications, text notifications, so they can pop and you can call the leads as quickly as possible within five minutes of opt-in. So in this cheat sheet, if you got this for yourself, you can copy Facebook ads uh, under this video if you haven't gotten this yet. Uh, and then in this cheat sheet, there's instructions to check if your CRM has a native integration with Facebook. If yes, obviously you can just follow those. And if not, you can use Zapier. So CRMs usually have help documents walking through the Zapier integration. So ensure that you get instant SMS and phone popped up notifications of the new leads that are coming in. And you want to respond to leads quickly within five minutes of opt-in. This can easily be done via uh, Zapier SMS. 
Uh, and there is an MIT study where the odds of you contacting a lead if cold within five minutes versus, versus 30 minutes, uh, it is 100 times. So if you call the leads quickly, you're gonna dramatically increase your odds of being able to convert these leads coming in. Now, having said this, next let's cover optimizing your ads. So as you start running your ads, you're first of all gonna have the initial AI training period. So after you launch your initial ad sets, wait for three to four days to let the ad delivery AI to test your ads, gather the data. And while you're working on the leads, you're getting already from these ads. Now you wanna turn off the worst performers. So you can look at your ads and then see, okay, which ad sets give me the best cost per lead and then which ones are doing average, which ones are doing poorly. And you wanna look at the cost per lead on those ad angles and then consider the conversions and conversations you've had so far and then make assessment on what ad sets to turn off and then what ad sets to keep. So from here, we're gonna be scaling up your winners and then maintain a desired monthly ad spend. So after the initial three to four day testing period, you can turn off the losers and duplicate winning ad sets until you reach your total desired ad spend level. So as an example, if you wanna be spending $1,000 per month on your advertisements, then from there you can keep on three ad sets that are spending $10 each, which will ultimately lead into closer to that $1,000 per month mark. If you want to be spending $2,000 per month, right, then at that point, you want to be keeping around six to seven ad sets. So simple as that. And then you want to be turning off the ad sets that you no longer want to be doing based again on that cost, based again on the results it's getting. Now, the next step from here is obviously converting your leads that are coming in. So first things first, make sure you have a clear sales process. So dial in your lead notifications, call scripts, SMS templates, short automated email sequence, and get organized on maintaining your pipeline. So right now, if you have never done any sort of lead conversion before, or you have never done that successfully, make sure you dial in all these steps, make sure lead notifications are coming, call scripts, all those things are dialed in right to the T. Next step from here is your nurturing marketing. So a lot of, see a lot of times when people are only running, let's say like a lead form ad, and they have no sort of presence online. They have no personal branding, no content strategy, nothing. So that's gonna help you a lot when you build a strong personal brand, when you have content that actually nurtures leads, when you have content that actually pre-sells them on working with you, gets them to reach out to you, that's gonna really increase your profitability of these campaigns by an order of magnitude. You're gonna have so much easier time converting people when people actually know you and when actually people like you and trust you, they know that story, they know exactly who you are, it just makes everything so much easier. So make sure you also have a nurturing marketing going on and make sure you have a strong personal brand and then you'll be able to create something called omnipresence retargeting where you're able to actually then run advertisements from your content that actually nurtures all of these leads that are coming in and it's gonna make the leads a lot more warmer and again, likelier to convert. So here's what omnipresence looks like. And as you can see, these look like regular posts you would see from any of your friends, any of your family members regularly on Facebook. You're native to the platform. But the main thing I wanna bring forward here about generating leads online or even real estate in general is the sales cycle. So when you run these ads and you start generating these leads, the homeowners, the people that want to be buying or selling their houses, they're gonna be having a long-term view on things. They're not gonna be selling their houses right away. There's gonna be some people that are gonna be selling their houses right away, but probably 90, 95% of the people will be selling their houses like a month later, three months later, six months down the road, 12 months down the road. And you need to be able to stay top of mind with these people and be able to build that relationship over that time period and be able to be top of mind with all of these leads that are coming in. So it's gonna make a massive difference in your ROI if you're able to convert those leads as well, in addition to the leads that are coming in right away. And as you set this up, you can have this post be running on your Facebook, obviously on the Facebook feed, but also on platforms like Instagram stories, and Instagram feed, and additionally on the back end when you have your email sequence and email broadcast going on. If you create a YouTube video, you can send over that YouTube video as well, which is gonna build up your presence over there as well. So this is a game changer if you've ever done lead generation before and if you haven't had something like this, this makes a massive difference in the quality of the leads, the engagement of people, but most importantly, long-term conversion rate. So when you put in a thousand dollars, how much you get out, something like this can drastically change that as far as long-term six month, 12 month ROI goes. And the last step in this campaign is gonna be weekly emails. So after that short initial automated email sequence we're gonna be sending over, you'll wanna be sending over weekly personalized, customized, timely emails that leads into inbound increase from people 
and again, increases that profitability, increases that engagement. Again, when you're generating these leads, the first step, creating qualified, creating interested seller lead is just the beginning. Remember, that's just where the whole process starts from. And we want to be able to nurture people from all these different angles on all these different platforms. And then emails is one of the most powerful ways to do that. But you got to do it correctly. Don't use drip campaigns or automated sequences or generic templates that a lot of other people are using. You want to be making sure your content is valuable, it's personalized, it's custom to the local market, and it's building that trust, it's building that relationship with that homeowner. And from their perspective, they're really getting to know who you are, they trust you, like you, and really be able to, at the end of those three months, when they're ready to sell their house, know that, hey, this is my guy, this is my real estate agent, I want to be working with nobody else. That's going to make your listing appointments so smooth. It's going to make them so much more easier to actually conduct. And then actually the transaction itself too will be a lot more enjoyable to do as well. So a couple extra tips for your ad strategy selection. So first of all, make sure you look at your target market, client avatar. So in some markets, some situations, YouTube is superior to Facebook, in which case you would run a similar strategy over on YouTube. That's outside of the scope of this video. Uh, also, you want to be looking at your personality and skills. So for some people, creating video creatives will result in superior results to text and image-based creative. Creatives. And the reason why is because with video, some people are natural with that. And then with those, we can generate higher impact. But with text and image, it's easier to create and it's a lot easier to get that to work compared to video. So there's like a higher skill gap when it comes down to that. And then it works only for a certain personality when it comes down to video. Also look at your financial situation. So if you don't have at least $1,000 a month to spend on your advertisements, it's too early for you to get into advertising in the first place, like we covered before. You're just not gonna have enough money even to test anything out because you, you run out of the budget even in the first place. So it doesn't make sense to do unless you have $1,000 a month to spend on your ads consistently over time. Also, then if that's the case that you're in, right, focus on organic strategies first to build up your cash reserves and have a lot of uh, resources around that too. Okay, how do you actually get listings? How do you get buyer clients without spending anything on your advertisements? So if that's where you're in right now, focus on organic strategies first. Don't even attempt to run the ads in that case. You just won't have enough leads coming in for this to make sense to you. All right, we covered a lot of ground here as far as what's going to be the profitable way for you to advertise over on Facebook, how to attract your ideal clients, how to make sure your leads are actually qualified, they're actually interested, they're actually engaged, how to convert them over the long-term time horizon, and so on and so forth. We covered a lot of different things. You may have at this point a lot of questions or maybe you want to see more examples or you want to know how this would actually apply in your exact market or in your exact situation that you're in with your current infrastructure of, as far as your advertising goes. So if you have any of those or have any questions just in general, uh, in the link description below, I have you a free strategy call that you can click on. And then in that free strategy call, we can dive right in, look into where you're exactly in, what you have available as far as infrastructure and as far as resources and guide you in that right direction as far as your listing generation goes. So if you like that, it's a completely free strategy call one-on-one -on -one over on Zoom. So click the link in the description if you like that. And then obviously for the cheat sheet, you can just comment fe uh, Facebook ads down below in the comment section, and then we'll send that over to you for free as well. So for a free strategy call, it's a link in this YouTube description. Click on that and you'll be able to pick a time there that whatever makes sense most to you. And we'll hop over on Zoom and help you out with any questions you have. So click on that if you like that. Other than that, hopefully you enjoyed the video and found this valuable. I'll see you on the next one.